All right, everybody. I think we are live. Setting things up here. Saturday night, Bell Bell Swing, Joel's College of Swing Era Knowledge. All right. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Okay. Woo! Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Let's uh, get everybody chimed in here. All right. Hey, Dad. Still can't believe you're on Instagram. All right, I have to share something. Um, I don't know if you can see my hair, but I took the clippers to it, like myself, and uh, I didn't do such a good job. We got like some stuff there, and it's it's. You're gonna see a lot of hats, I think, uh, <laughs> for the next few days, unless Jackie figures out a way to use the clippers. And uh, but I got a lot of hats. It's all good. Okay, tonight. We delve into the wonderful world of Balbo and Bell Swing. Um, if you go to the Facebook event um, for tonight or even next week, um, and this was just off the top of my head, I'm like, hmm, what can I cover? And I went, and lo and behold, there is just way too much stuff. Without a doubt, I love Lindy Hop. Um, I love all swing era dances. Um, I love the Madison from the 1950s. I, I just like all this stuff. But without a doubt, I think um, if I had to have a, a specialty or a niche, I guess uh, Balboa could be it. Um, just because I was lucky enough to do a lot of work with Valerie and Sylvia and Jonathan and create the All Balboa Weekend, which of course created like all kinds of like just a, a mecca of Balboa coming to Cleveland for years and then the Balboa rendezvous for 10 years and uh, good morning from the future. Love it. Love it. Um, and when I ran Balboa rendezvous, uh, just my idea of the event was to try to bring the dance back to the peninsula and more importantly, to try to contact as many of the, we call them the old timers. I, I said masters, in the DVD to show a little more respect, but they actually kind of got a kick out of being called old timers. But that created a, a huge relationship uh, between myself and a lot of those cats. And uh, just a lot of stuff over the years is in my head. And um, so um, tonight though, let's get a little more specific and get to it. We're gonna focus on some um, Balboa stuff. Nowadays, we we kind of, call it pure Balboa to distinguish it. Um, you have your Balboa, which is closed position stuff, and then Bal Swing, which is your open position, throw out, lollies, pop turns, things like that. And again, I apologize for my, my following that aren't well-versed in the ways of swing dancing. I almost feel like um, I definitely need to get some basic lessons out there for some folks. I'm gonna make some big assumptions tonight that you know some basic Balboa, and most importantly, um, oh, and a big shout out to uh, Dean Mora. I'm going to be using Tar Paper Stomp tonight from Mora's Modern Rhythmists. Um, I've been getting flagged for uh, music rights and stuff like that. It's all good. My videos aren't going away, but it's, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I got to find some, some good music that uh, won't get flagged. But anyway. Um, and there's a donation link. If you're digging this material, even a dollar or two will greatly help. So um, tonight, pure Balboa connection and stringing together pure Balboa figures or moves. So when I say pure Balboa, I'm going to make the big assumption that you Balboa fans out there know what I mean when I say ad libs, crab walks, paddle turns pivots or break turns yeah now you can layer also some footwork variations but that's a whole nother session in itself so again ad libs crab walks paddle turns and pivots uh do do keith berry oh my gosh i got friends chiming in from my fraternity days i got friends chiming in from my lansing illinois 
days back in the day, lollies aren't pure bell. Nope. Lollies is a bell swing move. You would get kicked out of the ballroom if you did some lollies. Boom, kick a couple. Boom, kick a second couple. You're out. You'd have to go to the next ballroom. Again, another story. Let's get to it. We're going to talk about um, pure Balboa connection. I've seen a couple other videos of other um, colleagues of mine doing this kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> nope, only had a one day of Balboa workshop. Don't stress. You're in good hands. Okay, so um, pure Balboa connection. Now, for me, um, I learned from... Jonathan and Sylvia, and more importantly, Maxi Dorf. And Maxi Dorf had what we're going to call the V connection. I'm staying low so you can kind of focus on, on my upper body here. What that means is, for me as a leader, I'm going to have my elbow close to my side, and I'm going to extend my forearm out, and I'm going to get connected with my forearm. So I have this kind of look and feel. So let me turn this way. So this is me from the front and then from the side. And you can kind of see already this, this angle from here, from my chest to here. And if I, <laughs> if I kind of, ah, oh, it's kind of hard. If you're looking down from above, you'd see a V in, in, from your chest to your arm. Now, as a follower, you're gonna create that structure when a leader gets connected with you to, as we typically say, keep your back in the leader's hand, or in this particular case, keep your back in the leader's forearm. Now, that doesn't mean lean back really hard. It just means we're kind of nestling into this connection. So let me stand up. I have some props here. And again, this is where I've seen some of my other colleagues have fun with this stuff. So um, I got some pillows here. Let's, uh, let's start with this one, because this is probably the most important one now. Uh, but, uh, but I'm going to make some points here. It's a pretty thin pillow. It's a very light pillow. So when I go to do this connection, my arm is, is in slightly because of that thinness, but I'm trying to keep my elbow close to me. And so I'm nestling this pillow in my right arm. I'm just going to focus on my right arm for right now. And so I'm focused on getting connected with my forearm versus connecting with my hand on the back. So if I have my elbow here and my hand on the back, then it has that look and that feel, but I'm gonna nestle with my forearm and hold this pillow. Now again, this is a thin pillow, so my arm is closer to my body, So and it's very light. But even in this lightness, let me move this up a little bit so you can see my head. There we go. Even in this lightness, I still have to hold the pillow. If I'm super wimpy with my right arm, I drop the pillow. All right, let's go to pillow number two. Pillow number two is big and fluffy, and I get my good connection here, right? And now this has a little bit of a different shape and a different feel, but I'm still thinking about my forearm, this part, and the pillow is nestling into my back. I'm sorry, <laughs> nestling into my arm. I always get that backwards when I'm teaching with Jackie too. So the, the pillow's back is nestled into my, my hand, my arm, and I'm slightly pulling in and I can feel that pillow. Now again, if, if I am really wimpy with my hand, I lose that pillow and I'm not squeezing the pillow. Right, so you can see that I'm squeezing this pillow. Maybe this is a good, yeah, there you go. That's a good angle. So I'm not squeezing the pillow. I'm keeping enough connection that I've got the pillow, but not so little that I lose it. Is this making sense? Yes, I agree. Worst feeling to pillow talk. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Worst feeling to have the hand strand on back. Yes. And so, um, all right, we're going to go a couple more examples. Smaller pillow, but it's got some, some structure to it. But now this, this one actually really feels like, like a, a follower in my arm. It's just got kind of that, that shape. Now I say this all the time in my workshops. Everybody's got different sticky outy parts. Okay, so I'm, I'm purposely using different pillows to, dis, to show that 
I'm connecting, trying to connect the same way, regardless of the shape or size of the pillow. And the pillow has a little bit of structure. I'm not squeezing this pillow. I nestle this pillow just enough. And if I'm wimpy, I lose it. Last example. I like this one because it's got some shape to it. But more importantly, this is one of those really nice pillows. It's kind of got some weight to it, right? And so now when I nestle this in, it's got that feeling of the green one, but it's got a little more weight to it. So I have a little bit more of a squeeze. Otherwise, I'm going to lose it. But remember, I'm not squeezing it really tightly against my body. So we're going to focus because I like the way this looks on the camera too. We're going to focus with this pillow. Right? I can even maybe like do it in half and then kind of go like that, right? So now I've got this pillow. But again, if I'm wimpy, I lose that pillow. So again, I can't stress enough that followers, you, you create the shape that nestles into my forearm. So if I'm following, when, I, when someone asks me to do bow, what happens a lot of times is followers will come to me and they'll go like this. They'll go forward and put their chest right into me. So if there's a follower and I said, you want a bow? And she goes, and I'm like, oh, well, okay. Rather than staying there, and then I come to the follower, nestle, and we both settle into this connection. Now the followers will keep their weight underneath them, but feel like they've got a nice connection along my forearm. Now again, followers, you might feel a lot of different things out there. It all depends. <laughs> yes, take a pillow to class. It all depends on, on where you've learned your Balboa. Um, some teachers prefer, I've heard things called the A-frame. Some uh, teachers prefer to be pressed up against each other. I've seen exercises where you hold a piece of paper between your bodies, so you're focused on the forward press versus, again, what I'm feeling, oh, man, this is tough. Um, I need to be there with you. Okay, it, there's a, a little bit of an away but there's also an in, and the in is created because of the leader's nestlage, not because the follower is leaning into the leader or that the leader is trying to like hang on tight to the follower. It's, I hope you're, you're seeing what I'm talking about with the different pillows and the idea of the V versus being flat. So that is my preferred Balboa connection because it has, and I've used this word for years, a nestlage. The follower nestles into my right arm. There's no big squeeze, but it's not loosey-goosey. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very controversial topic, the connected hands. Now to prove that there is water in here, I'm not going to spit it out. Okay, but you can see that there's water in here. But I want to show something. If I have this filled with water, it has some weight to it. When I hold it, I'm going to hold it with all my digits. One, two, three, four, and my thumb. I'm holding, oh, sorry, Instagram. I'm holding this cup in my hand. Now, I have structure to my hand. I have finger frame. I have thumb frame. There is a little bit of a structure in my wrist so that this doesn't dump out. Jackie would be very upset if I spilled this on the new ottoman. Anyway, now watch. I'm going to stand up. Now, as I'm here, oh, and let's go ahead and simulate combat conditions. I got my follower, PJ here. <laughs> now I have my follower, her back, the, or the follower's back is nestled in my arm. And now, again, this cup simulates the follower's hand, where I personally am hoping my follower is also giving me some connection. So neither one of us is loosey-goosey. We're holding this water, and it has some structure, some weight to it. So I don't have to squeeze this really tight. 
but I'm not going to demo it right now. If I let this go, it's falling and spilling all over the floor. Now, if you have a nice bend in your knees, not a Lindy bend, but a nice Balboa pulse, and you do your footwork and your bell, you should be able to hold your partner and hold the glass of water or maybe a coffee cup. And now I'm doing the basic footwork. And again, I'm making some assumptions out there, but notice the water is moving slightly, but I'm very solid centered and stable as I do my movement. So from this angle, I'm here. I'll go from the side. You can see that slight V. Yeah, don't worry about the feet. Doesn't matter if you don't know Balboa. From the back, you can see that my left hand is out slightly. I would normally have that right at the follower's shoulder level. And here I am back to this angle where you see both components coming in together. All right, so let me go get another prop really quick because I don't want to dump water everywhere. Okay, sorry about that, but I needed to show this because now if I am, and this has been a trend over the last few years, that's why I say this is controversial. People have been talking for years about relaxing the connection in the hands. Followers right hand, leaders left hand. Relax, 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 relax. But that does not mean collapse. It doesn't mean we have absolutely no frame at all. Now, because if I take away this connection, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, but oh, hold on, Let, let's connect. Nope. Hold on, let me let me try that again. I'm gonna really relax my hand so. I've even heard this stated in classes that I've observed. There should be nothing in that hand at all. Okay, hold, hold, hold on, let me, let me try this again. Let me try to connect with some, oh, oh man. But, and then I got that follower that doesn't want to connect with me. I'm gonna to try to connect with, oh no. I hope you get my point. Hold a cup of water. Uh, Willie Desitoff actually used to have us dance with uh, uh, actually like two or three rolls of quarters because he said you need to have some weight in in your hand and so one was too light and so and then trying to hold three rolls of quarters you, you actually again you had to hold it he also gave me the coffee cup kind of analogy and holding that as well and I'm telling you guys, this is this is straight from one of the masters of Balboa talking about having a hand connection. Last thing I'm going to mention about the hands, followers, please do not grab my thumb. When a follower goes to connect and grabs my thumb, that is the most interesting connection I've ever seen. And leaders in general, I know some of you have learned this. Some of you have learned to put the thumb in there and then wrap your hand around. I'm not a big right or wrong type of teacher. I'm just gonna tell you how things feel. And if you grab my thumb, it feels like you want to milk my thumb. And when we go into other movements, then you start grabbing other things because you just had a thumb. If we connect our hands, everybody can do this at home. So take your left hand, put it out in front of you, take the right hand and put the thumb out in front. Meaning like, so I'm here and then my right hand's gonna go this way. And connect. And visualize that you're holding a cup of water or holding three rolls of quarters. Notice you won't go loosey-goosey because you can't hold it, but you're also not gonna squeeze the crap out of your hands because you don't need to do that either. I remember a private lesson in Australia and I got connected with the follower and she said, oh, you're squeezing me. And I went, let's talk about this. And yes, I agree. If, if, my, if my rule book, if I've learned that this is supposed to be all loosey-goosey and no connection, then yeah, if I'm holding a cup of water or three rolls of quarters, it'll feel like squeezing. And, you, and you'll see the followers sometimes, they're like, you know, you'll see their hands and their, their fingers go like this, right? So I'm just trying to hold quarters or water, but the fingers get all smashed in. 
and followers. That's what I mean by not having finger frame. If you visualize holding a cup of water, you will also have frame in your four fingers and we share that together. So yes, I agree it can feel like a squeeze if you're used to nothing. But if you're thinking about my analogy with actually holding something and you both do that, that's the connection I'm going for. So again, I'm just kind of talking about basic connection stuff that I prefer. The other stuff is not wrong. It's just going to feel very different. Okay. Oh, man, we're doing good. So that's about 20 minutes. Um, are there any questions out, out there about connection? So for me personally, I like the V connection. Uh, Nestledge uh, has a D in it at least the way I spell it, N-E-S-T-L-E-D-G-E. -E. Maybe it doesn't in real life, but I like it that way. Um, I learned with the piece of paper. So there, no, again, there's nothing wrong with the piece of paper. It just means you have a front smush focus versus uh, a, a slight away and then feeling the leader nestle you in, no big deal. All right, very good, very good, very good. Great explanation, thank you, thank you, thank you. A whole new meaning now, beautiful. Okay, it looks okay. So again, you got to explore with all these different connection points. The last thing I'll say, and we brought this up in classes a lot, is again, if I'm, oh, let's see. I'm going to use this cup because I'm going to drop it. Oh, where are you going to go? Okay. So if I'm here, if I've got my V and I have a good connection with my follower at her waist level, and like just check yourself sometimes, like stop dancing and then like move away from everybody. So I'm going to move this cup away. Move the follower away. And now look, I'm very balanced. I'm very relaxed in the shoulders. Yeah, again, I have my elbow here, closer to my body with a V, right? And again, this is going to be at the follower's like shoulder, right? Like right below the shoulder area. So this might vary, right? And so this might vary slightly depending on followers' different sticky outy parts. So we're right here. And what I see a lot of times. If we're at class, a lot of times we'll put music on and say, hey, everybody bow. And then the leaders might have their hand up over here. And then they got it in here and they're squeezing. And then we freeze. And then we say, let go of the hand connection. Let the follower go. And now look at the way I'm dancing Balboa. My hands are in here. I got the hand really spider webbed on the follower's back. I look all tense. My shoulders are up and you're dancing like this for two minutes. And we contrast that with ah, ee. and now I'm dancing Balboa here. On the flip side for the followers, what will often happen is you'll come in and again, you'll come in chest forward, flat. Sometimes that left hand is going to grab onto the shoulder because you think you got to hang on to the shoulder. And then again, you're trying to connect, but you've been told not to do anything with that right arm. So your right arm gets pushed way back here. And so sometimes they'll freeze and followers will look like this. Big hook on the shoulder, elbow way back because you don't want to engage there. Flat up against the leader because their hand is a big spider web on the back. And now you're dancing Balboa for three minutes like this. What if you relax your shoulders, take your left arm, let it come up to a spot that naturally fits on the leader. Could be the tricep, could be the lat area, but now you're relaxed down here. We've talked about the water with your right hand. So when you get connected with the leader, yeah? If we go back to this analogy again, um, I think I wanna fix that. So your right thumb should be closer to you, right? And then you give that nice water squeeze. That would simulate combat conditions, keeping frame. And now followers, if you're dancing like that, you're right here, and now you're in this position rather than some awkward position. So once again, because of our situation, dance with your pillows, uh, dance with your water, and actually I encourage you, fill it up. Fill it up almost to the top. Yeah, you don't have to go too crazy and fill it all the way, but fill it, and then that way you'll know when you're moving around in your Balboa, whether or not you've got nice precision or if you're too bouncy and spilling the water all over. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time left. So the other thing that people wanted to talk about was pure Balboa um, putting things together. And so um, let me step away here. 
So, and then. Okay, so I had a recommendation to do more stuff from the back, and I want to make sure you can hear me, so this should work out okay here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Let me turn this down, getting used to all this stuff. Okay, so now here's a couple things. So I want to go over these basic movements again. Um, and again, if you don't know Balboa, this is going to happen kind of quick. It might um, make your head go, but it's all good. Hey, Hopper. Off, oh, buddy. That was Hopper, everybody. Okay, so an ad lib. An ad lib can have different movements to the side, to the side. Maybe it goes forward and back. But the key to an ad lib is when there is a gather, there's a change of direction. So it's just kind of keeping your feet underneath you, gathering, going the other way, gathering. And that's kind of why we call it an ad lib, because you can go anywhere on the floor. You can go left, right, forward, and back in an ad lib. A paddle turn is where you take your body and you tilt or lilt over to one axis. So I'm on my left foot. And there's two different theories here. Either the leaders paddle around and scoot the foot or the leader stays put. I like to keep my left foot stay put and I'm gonna paddle, 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 and shift. And now I'm on my right foot, paddle, 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 and shift. And so what that does for the followers, going back to my bottle here. Now if you're following, and you're following that, hopefully you can see this on the floor. If you're following, you're gonna move your foot around that pivot point, and then when it goes to the other side, you're going to move your foot around that leader's foot. But again, like I'm getting into the weeds a little bit, and I only have a lot of time. But that's going to be our paddle kind of feel, where there's going to be a tilt, so you're kind of paddling. Boom, 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 boom. So an ad lib to me is upright. Back and forth, forward and back. You can take this in a circle. A lot of times people do paddles, but they're doing ad libs. So see how I'm standing up, standing up. Now if I really paddle it, I lean it, lean it, lean it. Boom, boom, tilt, boom, boom. Last thing about that tilt, I don't want to do a teapot tilt. I want to take the whole axis and bring it over. And the whole axis and bring it over. Okay, so that's our paddle turns. Crab walks have a specific movement. It's like an ad lib, but it has a specific pattern. I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to go a forward side, back side, a forward side, shift, a back side, forward side, boom, and shift. So this, this movement from the front, kind of this one foot's going to the side and the other foot's moving forward and back, that is what we call a crab walk sensation. And then pivots are just pivoting across the floor, clockwise or counterclockwise, staying in the ball of the foot. Again, that's a whole other lesson in itself. So I just wanted to quickly show you what we're going to work with now with regards to ad libs, crab walks, paddles, and pivots. So now the, the important thing here now is the transitions. If you have a really precise basic, for example, what I typically do is if I'm doing my basic bow, if I go into an ad lib, it's not mandatory, but I like to give a little twist and then push off to go into my ad libs. You absolutely could just go a one, two, three, four, and push. But that little twist, just this little one, two, twist, move it to the right, it just it's a nice little like get ready, something's coming. Again, it's not mandatory. I'm just gonna I'm quickly going through like my basic transitions. If I'm gonna do a crab walk, I'm gonna go, oh, let's go in order of what I was doing before. Paddle turn. So now I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. So now by count four, I've created my tilt and I've already started some rotation. And the follower is gonna feel that I'm three, four, and now I go around in my paddles. For the basic, I'm going to continue around. 
I'm going to stand up when I'm done, transitioning back into the basic movement. So as long as the follower feels that tilt or that lilt over to the side, we're going to be in what I call paddle land. All right? If I'm up and down, we're in basic land or maybe ad lib land or crab walk land, transition for crab walk. I'm going to take that 3-4, and instead of having precision 3 4 Five, six, seven, eight. Or if I'm stepping on three, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Those are the two basic rhythms of bow. Again, you're like, what? That's a whole other lesson. But I like to use the uphold three, step four for a crab walk. And the reason is because I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm taking not a huge step, but for Balboa, this is much bigger than my one, two, three, four, regular four. So now the follower feels the staggering of the feet. And now I go into the crab walk. I bring it back. And now I go back to the basic. Bop, 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 bop. Now, pivots. Um, pivots you can consider like a break turn where you're rotating the hips, going into a pivot. Dean Raftery would almost all the time do two ad libs to the right and then go into what's called a back pivot. Again, uh, you can get into it a lot of different ways. You're just really rotating the hips so the follower can hopefully feel that. Pivots are the best. Crab walks always feel awkward. Aw, we need to dance again. <laughs> okay. So I very, very quickly went through the four basic elements of Balboa. Ad-libs, crab walks, paddles and pivots now here's the here's the big golden ticket for tonight's lesson um and again i apologize to the beginners out there this this information is definitely for like more intermediate balboa dancers but if you think of everything as is just two counts right so an ad lib i'm going to think of it as going one two one two one two crab walk i'm going to think of it as one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. I'm going to think about the paddles. One, two, one, two. There's that tilt. One, two, one, two, one, two. If you think about Balboa, pure Balboa, as a two count dance, I'm going to say that again. If you think about Balboa as a two count dance, then at any time, this is something I gotta find the clip of Maxi saying this. Um, Maxi would say, Balboa is very versatile. Anything you want to do, do it. If you want to do it, you make it happen. Like it's he was all about like having it feel like circular and, and momentum, centrifugal force, he'd talk about a lot. But he'd also just he was wanting to be really creative and just say, if you want to do it, do it. And so I was thinking about that, and so it's like if you're in an ad lib pattern and you're moving and everything is two counts, one, two, one, two, let's say you wanted to go into a paddle. So on number two, notice I tilted my body and I started to turn. So now there's that transition, one, two. And now I might do a paddle. One, two, one, two. Now I've staggered my feet because that creates a crab walk feel. And I, that was like kind of a remedial example, but I hope you get the picture. Let me turn this off here. So um, I'm going to put a song on, and I'm just going to kind of move through some pure Balboa things. And I'm not going to think about it as, um, oh, man, how do I word this? As a beginner would, where I have to do like an entire eight count of one particular movement. Um, actually, let me think about this again. I'm doing okay on time. I'm take that back. I'm going to put a song on. I'm going to dance as if I, I taught ad libs to brand new beginners, a whole eight count pattern of ad libs, a whole eight count pattern of paddles and a whole eight count pattern of crab walks. So let, let's do that really quick. So check, check this out. This is just using uh, pivots, I'm not going to worry about right now. Just 
pivot anytime you want clockwise or counterclockwise. Just turn those hips and get going. But specifically, ad libs, crab, uh, crab walks, and paddles. Check this out. Okay. Okay. So I'm dancing my basic. And I'm going to do my transition. 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I did two paddles to the right and then two to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One more angle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, paddle turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Watch from this angle. Notice I set up that tilt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, five, six, seven. And now finally, the crab walk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, and one. From this angle. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So my point there is, I just danced through all the basic, basic. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, Jackie is a little predisposed with the young ones right now. So sorry about that. Um, do you want to? Are you available? Sure, yeah. I'm okay. You okay. Yeah. Let's let's do that again. Let me dance it with Jackie really quickly. So followers, I, I should have said this earlier. Followers, you just do the the same thing leaders do, just backwards and sometimes in heels. So you have a much harder job. But uh, watch this one more time. I'll dance all of it with Jackie real quickly, doing the full basic kind of. If I were to teach beginner ad libs, beginner paddles, beginner crab walks, it would look like this. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at Jackie holding my hand. I love it. Basic. Now, I do an ad lib. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to do a paddle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Now I go into the crab walk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, thank you. Now, actually, now that Jackie's here. Let's go back just a little bit. So check this out, followers. So watch how Jackie, when I connect with her, she doesn't come flat into me. So like, would you like to bow? Followers will sometimes do that. I'm like, hey! So she's going to wait for me to nestle. I nestle, and I create the V. Right? So now you can see here, we have a slight V in our bodies. We're not flat, just the chest. We're not opened up like an L. And we're definitely not side by side. We have a very slight V in our feet are offset. What Jackie's going to do is just let her shoulder relax and then come up to my lat area. If I was shorter, it might go to my shoulder. If I was much taller, it might go to the tricep. So again, everybody has different heights, so you have to adjust for that. And now, the controversial. We actually hold hands. We actually engage here. Both of us have our elbows relaxed, but, but I can feel Jackie's right hip because she's not taking her hand behind her. And she's not grabbing onto my thumb and just hanging on there or being super loose. And so sometimes you'll see nice guitar chords or like the rock hand. You'll see really interesting shapes here in the hands rather than just holding that glass of water, sharing that space, and now we're here, and if, if we separate, we're right here. And, and again, that connection, thank you, babe. That connection is so important. Okay. Ooh, 
crisp yet elegant. I love it. Puppy in the background. Love it. Okay. So, um, oh my goodness, you guys, every one of these sessions, seriously, we could spend, I could spend uh, like a Saturday, a workshop uh, on just these concepts. Uh, I wish I had more time with you all. Okay. All of that connection, I'm going to bring it back to what, where we just were. When I do all these movements and I can feel Jackie's I'm going to say it again. I can feel the right side of her body because she's giving me frame. Not a lot of frame. She's not stiff, but she's holding that glass of water. She's not loosey-goosey. She hasn't been told, don't do anything with that right arm. There should be nothing there at all. I don't know. I don't know who talks like, but again, and I'm not saying it's wrong. Please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying it's wrong but it feels like there's nothing there, a noodle, versus feeling the follower's right hip in your left arm, feeling the follower's left hip and her back engaged. All those connection points come into play when we do the bell. Now, I'm gonna bring this full circle, we're gonna finish up in 45 minutes. Um, okay, the trick to stringing all these things together is thinking of everything as a two count dance. But every time I go into like number two, it's gonna be a transition to the next thing. For example, uh, like one, two, one, two. If I wanna crab walk, I'm gonna to try to stagger my feet because then I can get that motion going. On a paddle, on a two, I'm gonna tilt because I want the follower to feel that two and start to rotate. So now we've got that rotation. On a two, I might set myself up to really give a good push off to the side. And it's really important for me to be clear in all those movements when I'm dancing all these pure Balboa elements for my follower to feel it. So if I can dance with Jackie one more time, this is putting her on the spot, but I'm, and watch. So sometimes the pure bell move is going to be two counts, sometimes four counts, sometimes six. Like I'm just going to play with ad-libs, paddles, and crab walks, but I'm gonna transition very clearly each time. If you're counting at home, I know it might be off with the music. I apologize for that. I don't know how all this stuff works. I can't even believe you're watching me right now. Every two, if you're watching, you like go one, two, one, two, one, two. And notice on the twos, there's gonna be a shift or a change in my body that tells Jackie where to go. Okay. Um, should I just count this maybe? Um, let me do this just in case because I know the music isn't always syncing up with my voice or our movements. So let's try this. I'm going to think. One, two, 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 one, two. So every time like there's a one, two, I'm thinking about a change. Now maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. I know she felt it. So much more clear. She can feel when I stagger. Oh, sorry. When I stagger. She can feel when I tilt. She can feel when I push. Um, and so now let's put some music on and just kind of, again, we, we need to spend like an hour or two on this versus just showing it really quickly. When the leaders don't do those transitions, it feels very abrupt as a follower. You're just doing a move and it just going into the next move, it doesn't feel as smooth or flowy. So as yeah. a follower, I prefer those nice transitions. So I'm using that, that one, two, and by two, I'm into that next figure. So check this out. Someone said the music is syncing up just fine. Maybe for, for some of you it's a little funky, but watch one time with the music. I'm just going to mix things up. Again, thank you, Dean Mora and Mora's Modern Rhythmist. Thank you. 
it did come this angle so you can see what that transition was. Exactly. So I'm here, I'm doing it to the ad lib, just messing with the timing. And at some point, now I stagger. And I create that crab walk tail. Now I tilt. Okay. Hmm. Okay, come here. Papa. Come here. <laughs> and boom. Paddle, boom. Crab walk, boom. Back to the basic. Watch this one again. Now, I paddle, stagger. Crab walk, hit. Paddle to the side. Or sorry, add it to the side. So you can see I'm just, I'm really just messing with the counts and the timing. Always working with the collect or the sync down step for those transitions. A little bit of both. For me, it's kind of like the, the down, like the one, and then the two is the full setup. So specifically, if I'm here, for example, if I go, if I'm doing an ad lib, uh, let's do this to the side, I'm going, one, two, one, two, one, two. So I'm staggering. Now I stagger, and now I have my crab walk. Or if I'm going to my left, one, two, one, two, one, two. I stagger, crab walk. If I'm paddling, one, two, one, two, one, two. I went from a paddle right to a crab walk setup. I, I hope this is making making sense. So if I did a two count of everything, so what if I went one, two, boom, if I paddle, set up, crab walk, turn, ad lib, there. So every one of those was one, two. So I'm here, I have one, two, transition. One, two, transition. One, two, whatever you want. And, and so you've got to play this game as a leader out there. You, you you need to know in your head paddles, crab walks, and we haven't even added pivots. You just start pivoting. It's just, it's weird to just do a two count pivot. I guess you can think of that as a break turn or a come around, one, two, three, four. So um, always working with the collect or the sink down for those transitions. Again, uh, from what I just demoed, it's happening kind of on that, that down, that sink, as you're calling it. And then by the two, you're really into that that movement. But you can play around with with trying to transition in different ways. So, um, oh my goodness, it is. Uh, whew. There's a lot of stuff that we could. This is the point. Like in class, if I was with you right now, I'd have you all try it with the music. We talk about it. We tweak things. I'd give you some patterns. But that's homework for yourself. Write down ad libs, crab walks, paddles and do every combination of starting here, there, and everywhere. I think in a future lesson, what I'd love to do is we could devote a, a half hour to ad libs and ad lib variations. We can devote a half hour to crab walks and cool crab walk variations, and a half hour to paddle turns and cool paddle variations. Am I putting, a, uh, there's a question, am I putting a basic in between? You don't have to, uh, I think sometimes when I was demoing, especially when I was doing just the basic patterns, I did a bell basic and then a pure bell figure, bell basic, pure bell figure, et cetera. But this is the whole point of tonight's kind of topic is I'm trying to seamlessly go from, from a paddle to a crab walk to an ad lib or whatever the combination is. No basic in between. Thinking everything is one, two, one, two, transition, one, two, transition, one, two, transition, versus basic ad lib, one, two, one, two, one, two, transition, basic, transition, paddle, 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 transition, basic, transition, crab walk. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm trying not to put a basic in between. Easier said than done. Um, quickly, Balboa basic step. One of two things, step, step, hold, step, 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 hold, step, or step, step, down, hold, step, step, down, hold. Again, that could be a whole nother half hour lesson. I apologize to those of you that are brand new to Balboa, but uh, we do have a Bell, Bell Swing Fundamentals DVD. If you're interested in purchasing that, give you all the solid foundation from there. 
Um, again, if you've enjoyed this material, if it gave you any insight on your own quality of movement or your dancing, please consider donating. Stay safe out there. Um, tomorrow night is a teacher's organizer's chat. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but we'll figure it out. Joel's College of Swing Era Knowledge, Monday, Jazz, Tuesday, Charleston, Wednesday, Lindy Hop and Jitterbug, Thursdays, Spokane, Thursday evening swing, seven o'clock lesson, trying to give you some normal, Friday, Shag, Saturday, Bal Bal Swing, and Sunday for teachers and organizers. Um, if any of you are interested in setting up a semi-virtual uh, private lesson um, to work on any of the, these things, please contact me. We've got a Zoom account. We can set up specifically with, um, I mean, I guess we can do a whole bunch of people, but I think given the video setting, I'd really like to work with only like maybe three to five or four to six dancers. If you're interested, uh, please contact me as well. We're all doing the best we can. You can hear kiddo in the background. The other thing I was gonna throw out there, I seriously have to take a video of the way this place looks literally five minutes before we start. Got a five-year-old and a seven-month-old and you can only imagine all the princesses, all the castles, and all the stuff that's happening here in the Pleiss household. And so, there we go. I think I'm going to do that. Next time, I'm going to take a, a, one of those like time-lapse videos to show you me cleaning up frantically to set up for you all. I hope you're all safe. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I love spreading the joy of swing era dancing. I wish I could be doing it live with you, um, but this is as good as we can get. So, College of Swing Era Knowledge, Saturday night edition, night night. I'm crazy about you.